My name is uh, Dominique Gerin, chef owner of the Saint Honoré Boulangerie here in Portland, Oregon, and here in this location, Lake Oswego. Looks like everything is popular. Anything that people instantly can recognize from either traveling to France and seeing local bakeries with their croissants and their patisserie, almond croissants. So when they come and visit us here at Saint Honoré, it brings them back to their most recent experience of traveling to France. So anything that makes that connections for our guests is really what becomes the most popular item. I really enjoy traditions. I really enjoy working with people, connecting with people. And with all these years of experience, one of the best moments for me here at Saint Honoré is teaching, passing on the skills, you know, and showing them techniques and developing products with them. That's really something that I really like. We're getting ready for more ficelles in the oven. A little scoring here that really helps to finish the uh, look of the bread in the oven, but also helps to control the final rise in the oven. The key things for making a baguette is time. You want to work with time and give the right time for the natural process of fermentations to maximize the uh, quality of the ingredients that you're using with the flour and develop all the flavors. Most of the bread coming out is, is taken to a light bake and we use this to make our panini sandwiches so we don't want to complete full bake because then it goes back on the uh, panini grill and that was give a nice hot sandwich grill sandwich so that's the, the difference between a full bake and par baked or light bake I grew up in a family of bakers back home in Normandy in the small town of Etretat. Ever since I was born, we used to live on top of the bakery and I grew up in this environment. My daily life or routine back then growing up as a kid, you know, would go downstairs every morning getting ready for school and we walked in the middle of everything that was happening. That's how I grew up. My father decided to be a baker in the 40s. And and at 14 years old, that's when he went on for his apprenticeship. And eventually, shortly after he completed his apprenticeship, he uh, took on his own business that he owned and operated for 35 years with my mom. Chouquette, uh, this is a uh, very traditional French pastry everywhere. In France, every bakeries, they all have their own chouquette first thing in the morning. And this has become somehow our signature product here with uh, being baked fresh several times through the day. We usually typically go through anywhere between 15 to 20, 30 dozens. The process for me to become a baker was almost by default or happened naturally. Growing up and being the oldest of four siblings, I was destined to take over and follow the footstep of my parents. So then I went on to the baking school of Rouen in Normandy and where I took a three years training that covers all bread baking, viennoiserie, patisserie dessert, but also chocolate confectionery and candy confectionery. So at one point of time during my career, I had an opportunity to join the team at the Louis XV restaurant at the Hotel de Paris in Monaco, along with Alain Ducasse and all his team of uh, talented chefs. It was a really good experience and an eye-opening to see a different level of culinary art. Right after I graduated from the baking school of Rouen, I was offered an opportunity to come here in Portland for helping to start a new French bakery back in the early 80s. And at that time, we were sort of the pioneer of introducing French baking in the region here. And initially, I was signed up for doing a one-year experience to provide my talents. And I eventually stayed about four or five years before I was called back to France to perform my military duties. We call this an egg wash. It's just a whole eggs 
bitten and give this final shine on the croissants. Finishing my uh, military uh, service, then I engage on doing more abroad consulting, mostly in uh, Southeast Asia and Japan. I spent a lot of time in Taiwan, but also some parts of North Africa where I spent about a year helping out to build a bakery in Tunis, Tunisia. That's the first mix of uh, what we call pio pain ordinaire, and that's what we're going to use to make all baguettes, rolls, and ficelles. I'm scaling my dough at uh, four. 0.7 kilo and that's going to be used for making the ficelle. Put it to rest for about uh, 45 minutes and then we'll take it to the bench. The connection with a living material, the living dough that you have to work with and understand and anticipate how that dough is going to perform. There's so many variables that will change the behavior of your dough that it's very important to have that respect and feel for the material with which you're working. The most important for me is to understand the origin of the flour, where it came from, how's the wheat's been grown, and the condition it's been produced. And analyzing all this is helping me to determine if the flour that I want to work with is going to provide me the results that I'm expecting for the final product. Cereal, pain au cereal, so it's ancient grain mixed together, and then we'll finish it with a mix of seeds on top here. Very nutty, very uh, dense good flavor and this one is uh, our walnut bread um, yes very very good it's my favorite with my blue cheese at home the first thing that I look at is how it's baked. If it's done right, it has a nice crust that can hold the baguette. You don't want the crust to be too thin, otherwise it's going to turn really soft and soggy, or too hard when it's too crusty, too hard to bite. And then I'll uh, cut into it and get a feel for the texture and have a pleasant mouth feel. During one of my stay in Taiwan, I was asked to perform some presentation on French bread baking at the Taiwanese Institute of Baking. And when I met the team there, I also met team members from the American Institute of Baking in Kansas, which they offered me to come and visit their facility in Manhattan, Kansas. And from there, decided to enroll for their program. And I spent about six years finishing and graduating in baking science and technology. So this is uh, almond croissants which by far is our top seller since day one, 20 years ago. So it's a leftover croissant, so it has time to firm up overnight. And then the next day, we uh, cut them open, spray them with some simple syrup, fill up the almond cream, and bake them. So we call them also twice-baked croissants. The key for making a croissant is to understand how to bring layers of butter together with the dough. The magic for that is to try to bring those two elements to work together so it's a matter of temperatures and consistencies so that the butter and the dough forms together those layers to develop that flakiness and crunchy texture. So really what makes a good croissant is, is to feel it should be light to the weight, has a nice definition of the layers from the folding of the butter into the dough. And I like my uh, croissants to be baked at the right stage when you have a good crust to it, have a little crunch when you bite to it, and uh, brings all the flavors, the caramelization of the butter and all of this. So you look at the bottom, it's, it's fully done. There's uh, very little traces of butter on the bottom. That means that that butter is really baked through with the dough and you're not gonna feel that heavy greasy texture you know it's, it's really gonna bind together and develop all the natural flavors caramelization flavors of the butter voilà, croissant beurre tout chaud Cannelé de Bordeaux, that's a very traditional eggy, rum, vanilla flavored pastry. And these are the almond friand, nice sweet little almond delicacy. 
Finishing and graduating from the American Institute of Baking gave me the level for entering the baking industry in America, giving me a completely different look at bread baking, large scale commercial factories. And I joined the Safeway team stores and they offered me to join the team to, in one side, improve and help to develop the skills for their in-store bakeries, but also participate in developing products products for the large commercial factories of bread baking. This is our uh, antique bread cart that was actually used back home in France at my parents' bakery. You see it has the last name on it and it was back in the 50s, early 60s, you know, they were taking the bread into town and delivering it to all the customers before they brought in the cars and doing it by cars, but they were pushing that cart in the street of Etrota, my hometown of Normandy, known for its cliffs that have been uh, known all over the world through the paintings from Monet and other different artists, especially from this era. This is our uh, cut of uh, baguettes. The tub of dough that we scaled earlier on the uh, mixer, we're taking it to that machine device and it will divide it into 20 parts. Dividing, doing a pre-shaping, giving another rest, and then we'll go back to it and form it to its final shape. To uh, ensure consistency, we try to also be very careful on the uh, time temperatures and we try to bring the dough out of the mixing at a temperature of between 27 and 28. Then there came a time where I was waiting to obtain my work visa to come back to the U.S. after I graduated from the American Institute of Baking. And during that whole process, which took quite a bit of time, I went back to France and rejoined the team at my parents' bakery. That's when my dad, who was also very involved in the baking industry, the Retail Baker Association, one day came back from one of his meetings at the office in Paris and said, this year is the opening for for the Meilleur Ouvrier de France context, and I signed you up for it. That's how it all started. At first, I felt really humble because I was very young and felt still pretty inexperienced. But then I really took on to it and really started to look at the program and training myself with also peers that were already Meilleur Ouvrier de France. It took me about a year to be prepared and ready to enter the contest and following all the different steps through the different selections, I finally made it to the final and then was awarded Meilleur Ouvrier de France, Best Baker of France. Everything that uh, we do here on the bench, it's all hand shaped and that really adds to the uh, quality, the texture, the softness to the uh, final product. And one very key element too is to allow the time for the dough to rest in between all the different stages. And just to provide uh, the time for this uh, living material that we work with to do its own things. So it's just a matter of uh, pushing out all the gas and then folding the dough over on itself and restructuring the uh, dough to make it nice and um, in this uh, even shape. And once you have that texture, you just have to stretch it out to the length that you're looking for. So I don't recall exactly the number of entries when we first signed up for the competitions, but we were about a couple dozens to go to the final. And the final is organized over a period of three days where you have to perform like you're eating in your own bakery. You're requested to produce a certain list of products uh, with certain criteria, and you have people to assist you. So you'll be judged not only on your performance and your skills, but also how you manage your work, how you manage people, because you you're given time for getting access to the oven, but you have to remember there's people before you and after you. If you miss that time slot, you're out.
there's a sense of relief when you know you win and said, poof, I made it, I'm here. And once you become an MOF in your category, then you're MOF for the rest of your life. But I was still very young at that time. I was one of the youngest ever won a contest in the bread baking competition of the MOF. So I don't know if I truly measure the uh, level of accomplishment at that time. It almost felt like, okay, I won, that's great, that's cool. Now I'm an MOF and let's move on. <laughs> So shepherd's grain has been our flower that we use since we first started. It's from a group of farmers. It's a, a company owned by farmers and in the Northwest uh, Washington, Oregon. They grow their grain in the fields and they practice sustainable farming, which is good for the uh, earth and the environment. And also, um, it's been really nice to be able to work and meet the farmers when we go out in the field or they come to visit us. So this is a very nice bread flour that we're using here. It has very, very good quality and consistency. The right amount of proteins that we're looking for. So here we have our final product, the Ficelles. We're gonna check on the uh, quality. What I like to do first is fill the crust. You know, it's nice, crispy, not too thick, and it has some good feel to it. Then what I'll do is I'll just do a break, and that's when I'll see how nicely it comes together and tears and you look at the uh, texture is so nice and light the crust is perfect thickness so you're not gonna hurt yourself when you bite into it so that's the first step to look at for the quality of the tear then what i'll do is uh, check at the uh, inside to look at a clear cut that shows the grain and it shows a nice creamy texture soft to the touch and open irregular cells and then the last final thing is i will just cut it lengthwise to have a very good look at the entire organization of the cells and you can tell it's well open cells all the way soft to the touch and you don't see any nothing prominent it's a nice even consistency with the smell but nothing really gets at you it's soft creamy again a little bit of acidity from the fermentation but not so much it's not a solid dough it's a it's a baguette so we're looking for a little bit of a flavor but but what you get also is the true smell from the grain and the flour that you can identify inside of the product perfect My favorite moment of the day is my breakfast when I can just enjoy a nice loaf of baguette or ficelle fresh out of the oven and butter. And that makes my day, pretty much. Et voilà, bon appétit. Mm. Perfect. So we're going to assemble the uh, Saint Honoré dessert, which is one of our signature, very traditional French dessert. The base consists of a layer of puff pastry, and then we pipe pâte à choux, and that gives this, this nice puff up edge. And these are the little shoe that we're gonna put around to assemble the final Saint Honoré. Here I've got my sugar for my caramel. So it's just a little bit of sugar and one third of water. And we're just gonna bring it to a caramel finish color. So the Saint Honoré is a very traditional French pastry. This is probably one of the most basic pastry that you're gonna find in every bakeries around in France. Basically, it's named Saint Honoré after the uh, patron saint of the bakers in France, which is uh, celebrated on May 16th. 
So I immediately came back here. It was here in Portland and I started my new assignments with the Safeway stores. But already then I knew that at some point of time I would go back to my route and really go back into having my own bakery. I came back for good in the U.S. in the early 90s, and we opened our first Saint Honoré in 2003. I had pretty strong set ideas of what I wanted to do, but I took on my own to do a lot of traveling in the U.S., but also abroad, and kind of get a feel for what was out there, and also continue to build up on more ideas. It took about a good year and a half, two years, of really focusing on what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. The challenge is, is re-asking yourself that question, are you doing the right things? Are you making the right products? Are you offering the expectations that the potential guest customers are looking after? You know, when we opened at that time, we had to go through all those, I forget the name of that uh, diet, but it was completely against what I was trying to do, bringing the gluten and the fat, butter and uh, rich cream and all of that, when there was a concept of a diet that was completely opposite of what I was trying to do. So I was really raising the question, am I doing the right thing? Should I adjust a product line to this category? And until the very end, I said, no, I'm French. I believe in my traditions. I believe in what I'm doing. And that's what I want to do. And I'm going to stick with it. Our plan is to continue providing that recognition from our customers, feeling like they enjoy what they find here at Saint Honoré. And yes, we could open more locations. That's part of our plan. But again, the way that I approach it is, is I want to make sure that my teams are prepared and so we don't lose the integrity of what we work so hard to build. So in 2015, I received the award of Chevalier du Mérite Agricole. Basically, I was knighted for the recognitions by the order of the agricultural for the merit of promoting and respecting the tradition of French baking and culinary art with all my work that I've done here being true to the French tradition. Receiving uh, uh, the uh, Chevalier or Knighted Chevalier du Mérite Agricole, it was similar to the Meilleur Ouvrier de France, you know. You become bestowed and therefore you have a sense of responsibility to really portray and respect what you represent. It forces you to maintain those standards and, and continue to work for the better. It's a recognition from the nation of France, you know, for your accomplishments. So, yes, you feel honored. Outside of work, I mean, this beautiful Pacific Northwest, I really enjoy everything that it has to offer going in the outdoor, hiking, traveling, camping. The nature is so beautiful here, and we're so blessed with what it has to offer us. of agricultural, uh, no, let's start over. <laughs>